tell us when and then. Okay. All right, it's 702. Um, good evening, I'll now call to order the May 9, 2024 City of South Pasadena Library Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, Sean, can you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Kenneth Gross? Here. Edward Pearson? Here. Minson Meeker? Here. Bianca Richards? Here. Thank you, and Annie said she'll be about 10 minutes late. Um, public comment. In an effort to better manage the business on the agenda, general public comment will be limited to 30 minutes at the beginning of the agenda. If there are speakers remaining in the queue, they will be heard at the end of the meeting. If you'd like to make general public comment for items not listed on the agenda and are under the purview of the library board of trustees, uh, please now raise your hand on Zoom or turn in the speaker card. Uh, Sean, do we have any speakers? We do not. Okay. Um, there being no one else present to speak, I'll declare a public comment period closed. Uh, reordering or additions or deletions. Uh, any reordering or additions or deletions to the agenda? Nope. Okay. Next item, um, approval of the minutes of April 11, 2024. So everyone had a chance to review them? Any public comment for the minutes? Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Yes, I move we approve the minutes. And I'll second it. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Sean, do you want to take roll? Sure. Kenneth Gross? Oh, aye. Uh, Edward Pearson? Aye. Minson Meeker? Aye. Bianca Richards? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Okay. Next item creation of a volunteer recognition uh, committee. Is there any public comment on this? John, do we have any public comment? We do not. Do we have a discussion? Just before? yeah. You know, I think Annie ought to be on this in, in this conversation. So, or is this just to create the volunteer recognition? Oh, are we going to discuss it? I just, it's, I it's, think Annie. I think that be. there was already consensus previously okay. that so you wanted is, to create okay. it, and now it's on the agenda to okay. do so. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Min. And yeah. Annie were, what? were okay. wanting to do that. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, it, it, we could have reordered the agenda and waited. I just Annie, thought about I, that, I yeah. think we're, I think it's, I think we're okay to, okay. to work. we can always go back and undo it if somebody said, <laughs> if Annie says, no, I, I don't <laughs> want to do that. Okay. Um, before we, uh, maybe I'll just read real quick what it is, even though it's not in the red highlight, just so you know what we're voting on. Um, recommended that we establish and appoint two board members, which we have, to a volunteer recognition committee uh, charged with planning the 2025 volunteer recognition event and making recommendations to the trustees and staff about the event and the volunteer recognition practices. Is is there a motion? No, yeah, I'll move that we create, uh, establish an, uh, a volunteer recognition committee and appoint as the uh, two board members uh, Annie Chang Long and Minson Meeker. I second. I'm sorry, who seconded? Oh, me. Min. Min. Okay, thank you, Min. Uh, can we take it, get a roll call? Sure. Uh, Kenneth Gross. Yes. Edward Pearson. Yes. Minson Meeker. Yes. Bianca Richards. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Uh, next item, Library Board of Trustees Accomplishments 2024-2025 uh, work plan uh, in the 2024 Commissioner of Congress. So I'll give you, I'll just give you a little overview of what's included in the staff report and then we can see if we have any public comment. Um, so for those of you who are new, which is, and even Ed, who the old way they used to do it was not this way. So they used to do a narrative kind of several page written report, all the commissions prepared that, and then they would go to the council uh, meetings and either read part of that or all of that. It was um, not very engaging and um, nobody really loved it. So a number of years ago, the city manager at the time said, let's have this event where all the commissioners from all the commissions get together have an opportunity to get to know each other, get to know kind of the 
the breadth of what's going on in the city by learning about what Cultural Heritage Commission is doing, et cetera, et cetera. So that has been going on now for a couple of years with the exception of some COVID years. Um, and it's going to be taking place in June this year. Um, June, let's see what are we? 20th. June. 20th. And thank you, Sean. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, it's June 20th. So as part of that, instead of writing a long narrative report, they have just been asking for like a short three to five bullet points on accomplishments for the current year and a short three to five bullet points for goals for the next year. Um, and as I was writing this report, I, I tried to provide a little context. I mean, to me, I feel like we, this body comes up with their goals and like this year, the goals that we had, we didn't even do a lot of them, not because of, of us, but because of the way the site planning project moved forward, but we had nothing to do with it, right? So it's not, you know, so I think that um, the other thing is that this board has a totally different charge and a totally different basis than the other commissions. And you have the, this piece that's totally different from what any other commission does is to be knowledgeable and involved in the day-to-day -day what goes on here. Um, so that you can advise and, and guide, et cetera. So that's kind of hard because what is the goal then? You know what I mean? I feel like um, it's much harder for this body to, I think, to come up with goals. It's not like approve, you know, seven planning, you know, applications or whatever. So that was just my thinking as I was writing it up and kind of thinking about how we sort of struggled a little bit sometimes to come up with goals and feel like you're accomplishing things. Um, so I think that at this point, we should, we just need to think about, or you need to think about what would you like to tell the rest of the commissioners at the Commissioner's Congress about what you accomplished um, in the current fiscal year. So that's number one. And then number two, thinking about where would you like to, what you like to highlight as things that you're going to work on next year. So, Sean, is, is, is there public comment? No. Okay. So I think we can just. It seems kind of hard to to make three to five when you, all you want to do is support the library and right. we accomplish support the library. Right. So, it yeah, it feels very um like this weird driven thing that I don't know. It's just different. This board is mm -hmm. so different. Do you have examples of other? commissions not hold. handy but um i definitely do but not not with me so that would have been a good thing to bring i guess i think about that list we've spent going over the last two meetings and accomplishing goals off of that that also might have interplay with other commissions or peace people in the city that then recognize oh there's maybe little holdups here or there or just I don't know. I, that seems like something that you guys have brought up so many times that is is actually goal driven, and I know that so much of the library staff is doing that, and I know it's discussed here as well, and how that can be supported. Well, I, I think you know, having just set up the commission about the volunteer recognition event to kind of fine tune what we have been doing and improve not just the event but the whole concept of recognizing. Um, contributors to the library, volunteer or otherwise. Yeah, I, I think that's for sure. And that's something we've never really put on here before. It's just, an, it's like a given that you're going to do it, but it's a huge undertaking and should be. I mean, you know, the other commissions should know that that's one of the big undertakings you have every year. And, and it's a goal for you to do that. But in, in addition, this year, the, re, the refining it and improving it and advising it generally is, is new and that definitely to me would make sense to have that as a goal. And then uh, just a, a, on, a, on a side of this, uh, Kevin, that that June 20th commission meeting that is a friends meeting. meeting yeah, yeah, we yeah, overlap. So, yeah. So we do overlap. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And yours are in the evening also? 
Yeah, right now we're we're pretty much a six o'clock, six thirty start time. We're kind of shifted for for our board members. We argued to do this not in June when we're in the middle of the budget cycle, <laughs> but that was not. There were individuals who um, we did not want to push to put it off. They really wanted to do it in June, so so that's where we are. Yeah, it's it's so hard to not overlap with the commission or. A, but what's the building we meant? It's June 20th okay. at the Thursday. War Memorial Building um, at 6 p.m. And I think that you guys, we've an ongoing goal is this continued, which is again one of your main charges is the administrative policies and yeah mm -hmm. yeah maintaining them improving them updating them right. keeping them up to date so i think that also is sort of a, a no-brainer even though it's not very exciting <laughs> it's it is i mean that's what you're charged with you know i pasted in some of um some of that language um you know in addition to developing and adopting written policies which govern the operation of the library the board is responsible for providing input to the city librarian on library needs and traditions and community attitudes and values and promoting library interests within the community. Um, so, you know, something around that piece and it and around the site planning. I mean, I think that um, last year we had the site planning yeah. goals and we just none of it. It just didn't go the way we anticipated right. when we created the goals. But I do think for sure that activity is going to you know go kick in this soon by next fiscal year for sure so there will be you know you'll be reporting back so i don't know if the goal is to just stay engaged and provide input via the rep you know the trustees representative to the ad hoc committee i don't know well would it be would it be appropriate at the at this commission meeting like when annie goes up there and talks because the library board of trustees is a little bit different than all the other commissions, mm -hmm. that that could be something that. Well, so, yeah. would, because I think the other commissioners, because they do kind of get confused. It would be nice to then always remind everybody that we're the board of trustees. We're not a commission. Right. We're slightly different. Yeah, that's yeah. we've never done that, but that's it. Would be nice to emphasize it. Mm -hmm. You know, with you, you know. You know I think it's good. Yeah, and along with that, I, I don't, you know, always there's somebody that's hosting the event or the MC introducing it. You say maybe you could mention that right before you mm -hmm. speak, and then you can go into that more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just mention, you know, our charges while we're appointed by, you know, our members are appointed by the city council. We actually have a charge that the state education code mm -hmm. lays out. So we're a little well, different, yeah. you know, just so people know. Yeah. I mean, I think that's important as they're doing this review of all the commissions, right. you yes. know, you know, that like we actually have to say right. like, yes. right, the toys, right. right. Like, why are we not, and you we know, shouldn't be consolidated mm -hmm. to like something to another, mm -hmm. right. Which we, there's we no, gotta, we have yeah. to be a standard. Yeah. There's no possibility of that. I mean, and they, they, they know that. I mean, yeah. you know, Mary sends me things and I'm like, yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not applicable to us, but yeah, we want to keep everybody in the loop. But yeah, I mean, I think that, um, that might be interesting for people to, to know um what what the charge is for this body and, and you know and it would be it would be interesting like men you're our newest member did, when you got on this did you know what the charge of being a trustee was not really yeah so it would be nice to at the very beginning yeah like, did you know what you, the mean? charge was or did you guys yeah so did you guys think that you would just be another commission yeah Mm -hmm. yeah. I wonder if I'm curious if on our like on your web page on the city's website whether we say anything about kind of the nature. We should do that. Should put a red asterisk in the Yeah, a little, mm -hmm. a little special yeah. something. Boost us. Yeah, sure. yeah. and I know a link to the education code or or That's whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I really like the the language that's in here about to perform these duties to be board needs to be well informed, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. is a bullet point in itself. Mm -hmm. I yes. Think. Right. Um, yeah. Right. That's kind of a talking point. Mm -hmm. I do think it would be helpful, though. It's interesting because I didn't know a lot about it. 
um, I knew about it through Annie mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I knew it was like advisory and capacity and like supporting the library staff. But I do think it's interesting once I join learning about what's in the state code mm -hmm. and what the requirements are. I do think that's something interesting to like clarify for folks that even though it's required, like things have changed and we're under like city managers administration of the law. I mean, things are just different. Like we're not doing all the things right um that I think the code states maybe for other jurisdictions because of the structure of the city. So that's a good, that's a good point. well and that yes and I think that that's um th those of you who were here at the time we went through a, a many many meetings where we were working on the municipal code um to make it more um accurate and to truly reflect the duties that that this board has um, and then to make that, um, you know, legally okay in terms of what the education code says. So I, that project is going to come up this year. We need to do it. And it, it's especially, um, it'll be driven in part by the code of conduct review because those sort of go hand in hand. So I think we're going to be looking at that this year um, so we could literally to reg up that goal that we had a few years ago and just you know revisit it and maybe include it because it really is a super i mean this comes up all the time like a donation becomes comes to us and then well who who gets to accept it what is going to happen who gets it i mean nobody understands nobody understands um and the 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 education code is sort of broad and vague enough that yeah, so we really need the municipal code to be clear so that, yeah, when you, like when I onboard a new trustee, it's like, well, it says this, but, you know, it's just not that straightforward. So that could be a goal that you have this year is to continue that, to work on that effort because it is, a, it will take time. I mean, it's city attorney and um, public hearings. I mean, you know, it's it's to change the municipal code is um but it's we a bit of an undertaking. Talked about like the goals to review with you the policies and processes right like i just want to be mindful that in order for us to do those things you have to do the research to bring it to us to do it and is that like realistic that well i i mean i think it is because we already did it basically this board already got us to well we will revisit it obviously because we have new members but we did the work it just got stalled because of um administrative turnover um the city attorney opinion that yeah yeah it's done the work is done so basically what we would do is um i mean i think we want to focus on the code of conduct first but then what we would do is come back to you with that recommendation that we had gone to with the city attorney we basically got to the point where we went to the city attorney and said here's what the, here are the changes we want made to the municipal code what do we do now and that kind of, we kind of went off the rails at that point a little bit, mostly because of one city manager left, a new city manager came. And I understand the new city manager was like, I can't, I don't know enough about this to start, you know, changing, especially when it comes to, you know, you guys' responsibility with regards to selecting, you know, participating in the hiring of the city librarian to a city manager that has not worked with a body like this, which you don't if you were in a charter city. Um, that's like, what do you mean? That's, that's my responsibility. That's my place. So there, there's this education piece. So I think the turnover uh, at the city manager level is how we, where we got stopped and then COVID happened, you know, it just stopped. Yeah. So we've done the work. I think, um, I think that, uh, it, it, I, I think it wouldn't be that hard to continue with that. I should also make it clear that there's really sort of two parts to the municipal code. The part we were working on as this group and had determined, you know, what we wanted um, it was like the duties and responsibilities versus the second part, which is the code of, you know, the the municipal code that manages behaviors and and spells out consequences. So they're kind of like two totally separate things. So the one, the second one, would be being thought about as we're working on the code of conduct policy. The other, the work has already been done, but I would, but again, I would sort of say, wait on that piece, because we need to make progress on the code of conduct and the um, 
that second part of the municipal code, which really impacts our day-to-day -day work here. So, but you know, yeah, municipal code review and update is definitely something that I think you'll be doing this year, next year. I mean, as long as you think it's realistic to do it, um, and like we've had a whole conversation about setting up goals that are feasible. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I think that since, since our goal is the the one policy until we finish it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean. It's, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean. Like, if if we just are plugging away on the code of conduct, um, till it's finished, I think this is sort of just a piece of that, and some of it can happen simultaneously. I mean, we can start that conversation with the city attorney earlier. We can start doing the research, which we'll talk about in the in the other item. Um, but yeah, I, they really do go hand in hand. So whether it's, I, I do think it's feasible. It might stretch out this process of the code of conduct in conjunction with the municipal code versus finishing the code of conduct and then just going on to a new policy. I think we would want to deal with the code before we go to the next policy. Um, the recommendation is to direct you to draft a work plan. Um, for Thanks. us, do we need to do anything to direct you or can we? No, no, I don't think <laughs> so. You, direction? No, so you just need to okay. basically tell us what you want those goals to be, what you want the accomplishments to be. And then at the June meeting, we'll bring those and then you can adopt okay. those and take an action to say either as presented or, um, you know, with the following amendments, if, if we got something wrong. Um, but I think I have, so what do we have for the goals right now? So we have the volunteer recognition efforts, fine tuning, improving, um, uh, you know, advising on these, on recognition in general, we have, um, policies and maybe we, maybe specifically we say the code of conduct yeah. policy yeah. and yeah. not just make it more specific. That's yeah. educational for people too. Like, uh, yeah, I think the whole city. Policy? Yeah, the city needs to know that. Yeah. You know, yeah. About so, the, yeah. So make it specific that this is a big undertaking yeah. and and uh, has a big impact on library operations and um, yeah, I think be specific. Mm -hmm. and that'd be good. Um, and then uh, what was the other thing uh, we were talking about? Mm -hmm. Site planning. Oh yeah, the site planning, which I don't know how you want to word it. We we wordsmithed it a lot last year. <laughs> um, actively engage in the master site planning process and serve as ambassadors to the community to raise awareness about the need for a new for a new or remodeled library building, and to encourage participation in discussion. We could probably, you know, streamline that a little bit. But um, why don't we just say it's a it's a ongoing and a continuing effort on staff. Yeah, I mean it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will be ongoing and yeah. continuing. So and we'll continue. be participating in yeah. it right. with the right. who are appointed. Right, and you know, in, yeah. and the, the friends appointed their person. And, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe in can as part of the city's ad hoc. Yeah. I forget what it's called, but like kind of mentioning that mm -hmm. it's via that ad hoc committee that we're going to be right. engaged. Right, and through your mm -hmm. your basically appointee to the committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can I can um come up with some way to say that and then in June, if you don't like what's there, we can you can just amend it and, and adopt it at that time. Uh okay. And maybe that's it, those three. I don't know. I mean, you know, we you could call out the municipal code if you wanted to, but you don't have to. We only had three goals last this yeah. last year. You don't have to. Yeah, three, 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 is, three, three is fine. fine. I think we're just doing three. Yeah, yeah. But I think again, like when you're speaking, it would be really great to say that you know why you're different. Yeah. yeah. Why your goals yeah. are, I are be, different. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. 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 They're not quite as quantitative, maybe, as some people's, um, or even as you know, again, some of these commissions, they just they're. they're they do many, many actions, right? That's that's what they're there to do. They adopt, they act, you know, they act on all these things, um, which is just different than us. We just don't do it that mm -hmm. way. 
So it's easy for them to kind of quantify actions that they have taken. Okay, so accomplishments. Um, and my point, again, thinking about that as I was writing this was, you know, I think we, we've always been like, well, the goals were this, did we accomplish them? And it occurs to me that we don't have to tie, you know, we've accomplished a lot and maybe having nothing to do with goals that we set that the nature changed without our, beyond our control. So I would say just maybe think, think, um, think outside the box about what you might want people to know about what's been going on here. Um, let's think. When was the strategic plan approved? The strategic plan was approved by you guys in February 2023, mm -hmm. so the prior fiscal year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait. July 2023. August, September, October. Yes. Yeah. So it been 20, so, yeah. yeah. Fiscal year 22, 23. Um, yeah, you guys had so much activity at that time because of the part, the special tax and the strategic plan. I mean, that was just a huge, you know, that was a big thing. And that's the other thing about the, this body is that you do periodically have these bigger things that come up that, that you work on for a long period of time, which is not other commissions don't yeah. do that so much. We but now that and we're and we're allowed to do that. Yeah. And now that the special tax is approved in perpetuity, quote, in perpetuity so, yeah, you don't have to, you know, other than knowing what's going on with it, there's not a big, not a lot of work um, for you guys now. Now I feel like I should have held on to all of my minutes from the last year and, you know, just go through them and yeah. we did this and we did that and some are going to. Yeah, be more significant than others. But Ed, they're all recorded. You can That's watch true. them all. I could. <laughs> well, and we we maintain a list. You can subscribe of, to that YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> we have a a list. I mean, actually, yeah, it, it, the list is the action items. So a lot of it is for the minutes, approve these hours, do this, do that. So not very enlightening. But all the other items, which are the discussions and the information, we can throw a list of that together. Um, or you could just go to the website and look at agendas and kind of, oh, oh. Um, and that could be the direction that you give. If you want, you could say, ask staff to, to look at that and try to come up with accomplishments for you guys to consider including in June when you talk about it again. But, but isn't, isn't it, um, don't, aren't we one of the, uh, the bodies that we actually go over the, uh, the finances? So can't, would it be appropriate for any, I mean, don't, don't you guys stay in budget? You don't get over, overdrawn on anything. And yeah. So a, your role relates to the budget, which I don't think I put it in here. It's, um, and Annie and I were community, it's, it's a little bit unclear. Like it says that you're going to review it and, and pass it along to the city manager. Um, but in practice, uh, at least this year when it's all very fraught. Um, like, I don't think I can bring it to oh. you guys and tell the finance commission or the council, like in previous years, I just would show you, here's what we're gonna ask for. And there was no, um, no reason that not to do that. But I think in this current kind of climate where we're looking at decreased sales tax revenue and a lot of concern about the future, um, it's just, it's making it hard for you guys to, to see it and then say, great, it looks good. Well, then maybe we shouldn't mention anything about the budget. Yeah, I mean, it's, so, and that's another one where, it's, where it's, it. um, the, the way I see it is that we normally have a conversation with you guys about kind of how, what we spent, what are we trying to accomplish next year? How are we going to budget that? Um, I mean, and you guys have given input about, you know, like, well, I think you should do more, you should have more for books or whatever. Um, so it's more of the kind of the leading up to it process of deciding what that budget request is going to look like versus, you know, having any real 
you know, say over I mean, what ultimately just, gets adopted. I mean, ultimately, you can just put that way, like, we have oversight over it because mm -hmm. we don't do decision making on right. the spending, right? Mm -hmm. But we are overseeing in the sense that we're checking in, like, oh, you're right. overspent here. Why? Right. Tell us in the community, you know, right. Kathy, like, you know, for the sake of us as being constituent, yeah. it's kind of giving you that oversight yeah. of like the publicly spent funds. So, right, right. That's you know, true. And, mm -hmm. But we don't actually, I think that was the thing like when I joined, I didn't realize that we don't actually make decisions about the budget. You know, we were kept looking at it. I'm like, why are we looking at this? Are we giving you, are we approving this? And then um, I think, but we do give a level of oversight for yeah. public. And ask the yeah. questions like, mm -hmm. why is this for transparency why are you, for the public? Why yeah. isn't this that? Or, mm -hmm. Right, whereas yeah. nobody, no other departments are getting that level. Yeah. Oh, it's very interesting scrutiny, mm -hmm. right? It's different. Yeah, so that's true. You do have a unique role there. Again, it comes back to the whole idea that everything that you're you're privy to all kinds of information that other commissions is just not part of what they do, right? Um, I was also going to add, I mean, just in my short time here, um, kind of a blurry line because like, I would say for some of the accomplishments, if we can highlight and lift up like the library accomplishments, because we are so engaged in like supporting and listening to mm -hmm. you guys report out on your operations and your programming and trying to support and hopefully like help you move things mm -hmm. along. So even in the few meetings I've been in, just hearing about like your app and like all the programming, like those are your accomplishments. You're the operational agency, but like I feel like we're yeah. engaged in supporting that. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's yeah, highlighting so, just the library yeah. programming. Like, it, phrase it. it yeah, sorry, go ahead. Say it might be 99% library, yeah. but our little 1%, you know, <laughs> is an accomplishment. All right, well, and there's, the, and there's a way to phrase that, I think, you know, that mm -hmm. says, um, you know, provided guidance and, uh, you know, advisement enabling the library to do X, Y, Z. This used to be a big thing. Like, the mm -hmm. old director, all the things on the, the accomplishments were things the library did. And I was like, I think it's supposed to be, I mean, yes, they're they're really yeah. entangled in a different way, but at the same time, like to say the board accomplishment is launching a library app. No, your accomplishment is that you made it possible for staff to achieve certain things, right? So just, I think it's the way you phrase it. And I think the difference now too, is that the whole list is not gonna be just a list of what the library did that year, right? We have other things that really, are the work that you guys did, are doing, et cetera. So I think that's a not a bad idea either, just to kind of highlight um, some of the big things maybe this year yeah. that, you know, that your engagement and and guidance enabled us to do. So we can easily come up with something for that. Mm -hmm. I think also just maybe the public function of a commission like this. So like they can, the public can hear hey, we're hiring a new children's librarian or understanding, oh, you know, a part-time librarian we've had for 20 years has left. So like just generally, like not even what you are doing, what this commission is doing by existing, mm -hmm. right? It's right. A, it's allowing the public to really, you know, if they choose, know what's going on here. And maybe there's not so much, you know, that is such, the public function of this, I think, is really special, just sitting in on this. You, you know, you yeah. realize it's more than just the little things you're doing. It's the fact that we're all sitting here at this table and and just like, you know, there's the, the budget that you're going over or the questions that are being asked. So it's even just the symbolic idea of this, I think, is the accomplishment and that you have all stepped forth to sit on this, you know, in this role. So I think... That's true. And it's hard to pat yourself in the back and be like, yes. <laughs> but I just, you know, it is. It's so. Um, I thought we did, I guess we didn't because I, it's not on here. I thought we did the um, the collection development policy last year. It must have been the year before. Because uh, that was huge. It, it was last year. Okay. Yeah, I was here. Why, is it, yeah. why did I not see it on my list? Okay. So, I mean, it could, maybe it was like June. Quiet, so it was just before or something. I'll have to double check been. that. Yeah, right. Because of that, I mean, you you did, we did adopt, you know, we did do a couple of policies um, this fiscal year, and, it, it, and maybe that one as well. Um, so we could call out, you know, yeah. 
yeah. reviewed and updated, you know, policies related to whatever. Um, and I'll have to look and see. And that's a pretty hot button thing too. So yeah, I mean that policy, it, that policy is, and the code of conduct policies are like the two mm -hmm. probably most important policies that we have. So it was a big accomplishment to do that one. So I don't know if it's not on here it's because it's not on the list that I looked at. So it either happens like, you know, right before the, the new fiscal year, but I'll, let me check on that. Uh, in the terminating the memorandum of understanding, I think a great way to phrase that is like following through with city attorney recommendations. Mm -hmm. You took care of that business on the recommendation of the city attorney very efficiently. <laughs> so, so like, right, that's not, so, and, and we hope that that relationship, you know, both ways. So mm -hmm. I, I think that is an accomplishment of how quickly you're dealing with city attorney requests, maybe. Yeah. And that's separately, just back to the volunteer recognition, I, I think it's also important to highlight the amount of um, uh, engagement you had what? from like city council members that came, the mayor that came, that is an accomplishment. I don't know if other councils maybe have an event like that, that gets so much uh, engagement from, uh, officials here in this town. I think that's something you guys should pride yourself on something back for. Yeah, I think we could add that to the accomplishments and then it makes sense then because the one of the, the goal is to improve upon that, refine upon that next year. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so that's good too. I mean I think we have um a pretty good list and I can just you know try to craft those and I can run them by Annie before the next meeting, maybe, and yeah. then bring them here, and you guys can say we want this one, this one, not that one. We want to say this, and we can you can adopt adopt what you want in June. Um, yeah, so I think those are those are some good ideas. Anything anything else that you've been missing? Yeah, I feel can like we, we can we them. email you if we look through the minutes yeah. afterwards and Absolutely. we think of something else and just send yeah. it to you to be included. In Absolutely. For consideration. Yeah, because there are things where I'm thinking, you know, had a robust discussion about X, Y, Z that like led to the library doing whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're doing something here every, every month. I don't know what, but something. So, yeah, there may be things that, um, you know, again, we're not actionable, but that were significant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's resulted in yeah. No, that's a good idea. Really long yeah. 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 <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's great. If you guys look at look at those and just send us uh, just send it to Sean and I both anything that comes to mind, um, and we'll just work those into the um, staff report for June. Okay. Can I before we move on? I just noticed, um, and I didn't catch. I don't know if anybody else caught this. On item number four, the volunteer recognition, what was the focusing? Is there just a mis misprint? It says 2005. It probably should say 2000, I mean, 2025. Where is it? In addition to focusing the last under analysis, the last paragraph there, in addition oh, to focusing on the 2005 yeah. DRE, 2025. I just noticed that yeah. as we were listening. I mean, if we can publish like a, you know, a correction, but we could also just forfeit. But thank you. I know I always worry that I've got. Um. Okay. Um. And yeah. yeah. Anything else on the goals? Okay. Um. Administrative policies review project. <laughs> Contact policy. So. Um. So this is this. We had hoped to have this something like this for you last month. We didn't get it, mostly because of the volunteer recognition event. But the the idea behind this report is sort of we're launching this new approach to dealing with these policies. So we wanted to kind of let you know the work that we had undertaken, the staff had undertaken previously on this policy um, and try to kind of identify what the next steps look like, and then think about of those next steps, how do you want to contribute, be involved, participate? Um, do you want to do that? You know, one individual works on something, or do you want to have a, a committee that works on it? So those are the kinds of things to think about, I think. Um, so 
what we've done so far, which I can bring my folder in, but basically back in whenever that was, 2021, I think, we um, we basically got examples of these kind of behavior policies from lots of different libraries. Barb and Maid and I sat in here and we went through each one of them and we highlighted and flagged and noted and kind of came up with, oh, these, these are good things or oh, this is a better way to word it, or, oh, we never even thought of that. Um, so now, and that and that sort of as far as we got. So now I think the, the next step we realized as we met more recently is because our code of conduct, which I think I attached it, I mean, you can see it's just like this long narrative of things that you can and cannot do. And it, it's very hard to even compare what are the the things on our list to these other people's lists because they're organized by, you know, I don't know. I didn't bring my didn't bring my examples, but they they they've like grouped these things into categories um, that makes it much more easy for the public to understand and for us to con convey the information to the public. Like right now, when someone is doing some of these things, we have to print this out from the yeah. website with the highlight, <laughs> the line that it is, and say. Here it is, and you're, you know what I mean? It's very, it's a little strange. Um, so so the, ne so the next step, and I think staff are working on this now, is to um, start kind of looking at our current rules and clustering them in some way that it makes it easier to um, compare them with other people's policies so that we can then start to say what, what do we need to change in ours? Um, can I can I ask yeah, a question about that please. though? So for for the public, is this uh, anywhere in in a hard copy? Because I know like at um, Pasadena City College, we had to have our code of conduct right there uh, uh, available, and we, and then and then of course because we were uh, disabled student services, we had to have it in Braille. We had right. to have it. In so the Braille. municipal code. Um, does reference and say that, um, you know, if you're breaking the policy, which must be posted in a uh, obvious place, something like that. Um, so what we have posted, so what used to be posted was literally this whole thing. Um, and uh, legally, it was great to have it posted, but practically, it was not helpful. So I don't know how many years ago now we um, we created like a, and I don't know if you guys helped us with that or not, but we have like a kind of a shortened version that includes like the five or six main things really that we need cool. to tell people to cut it out, you know? Um, so those are posted all around. I think there's one on the wall over here. Um, and so, yeah, technically, we're supposed to have the whole thing posted somewhere, which yeah. we might have it up somewhere. Um, but yes, part of this objective would be to end up with a brochure, you know, that we can give people. I mean, other libraries have, you know, it's collected in a place that people can see it. And yes, we would have to, once it's organized and makes sense, it'd be much, it'll be much easier to post something useful. Is it, is this... But your is it something like this okay. rules of behavior? Yeah, that's so that's what we're now have. So we don't have, and I think we said, you know, the rest you can find here, hoping that legally we would get away with it, and we have so far. But um, yeah, so that's what that's our kind of hone in on the things that are most frequently issues. Can we put a QR code on here or something that somebody yeah. could just get the whole Yeah, thing we could do that. Yeah, yeah that's not Yeah, because we always had one parent or one right. student <laughs> who pushed us and right. well you don't it, it doesn't say I can't do that. Exactly. I mean with a teenager cell thought it doesn't yeah. say I can't smoke outside. Right. Well I'm telling you you can't. <laughs> yes. That should be good enough. <laughs> um so let me make a note. Uh on uh, what is that called? I guess that's our rules. It's also a city rule, not just a library rule. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. People will, I mean, even with this code of conduct, you'll say to someone, "Oh, you you can't have that um, sleeping bag in here," and that you know, someone will say, "It doesn't say. It says I can't have a bedroll. It doesn't say sleeping bag." I mean, you know, no, it, it 
You know what I mean? Like well, people yeah, will quibble. Yeah. They do. They do. Uh, well, they do. Out. So what happens in that situation when you guys get messed up? I mean, how, how? Yeah, I'm just curious. It depends on yeah. the the person, the situation, how, what else is going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not gonna. <laughs> if someone really is like, no, I'm not. I'm not. It doesn't say that I'm not doing it. We probably just let it go. Yeah. Um. And the other thing about this, the code of conduct policy um, that I noted in the report is it literally hasn't been the actual kind of body of it with all the things that you can't do. Um, it hasn't been changed since 2006. And then there's a lot of outdated 2006. stuff. A lot of outdated stuff. Yeah, like the world has changed. Um, if you look at our kind of chart of when things have been reviewed, it, it does show an update in 2017 and 2019. 2017 was when they adopted the municipal code. So it had to be a reference to the municipal code was added to the code of conduct. So nothing to the body though, just, and then 2019, we changed the rule about um, who could be in the teen room. You oh, may yeah. remember that. Yeah, that I do remember. And I that was on, the change I in 2019. Know. So like at first I thought, oh, maybe in 2017, they really updated and fixed a lot of things. No, mm. I looked back. It's They did nothing but add in. So really, it, I mean, it's it's really, not only is it organized strangely, it's truly out of date. Yeah, and, and some of the language is, oh. is very, I find some of the language is offensive mm -hmm. and uh yeah, which yeah. will be yeah. helpful to know. In fact, yeah. so again, as we talk about what can you help us with, um, those are the kind of things that we're going to want a lot of people's eyes on, you know? Yeah. Um, the, the thing about these policies, like you said, I mean, we have to be really careful that we don't have something here that creates an unintended problem or that is discriminatory. Like, we, we have... Um, I think, I don't know if it's municipal code or if it's here, but something about like hygiene issues, that's a, a big deal. It has to be worded a particular way. Um, so yeah, I think- Well, yeah, and then that brings in some culture because some cultural right. issues right. are, you know, yeah. the, the cooking and- right. Yeah, because we ran into that a lot also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, what was I just gonna say? Something about- what you just said. Oh, there's a whole conversation and you'll see this if you're looking at other policies. Some people try to like, not what you can't do, but what you can do, you know, to make it more positive instead of like, know this, know that. I don't know where I stand on that. I mean, this is what you can't do. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's better. you know, yeah. but it's, it's really, gray area. Yeah. I think the can't, yeah. The can't, like yeah. philosophically though, some people are trying to be more inclusive and welcoming by not making it so negative. I'm like, well, it is, this is, that is uh, I don't think it's an inclusive issue. Yeah. It's a, it's a issue. yeah. Well, it will be good to hear from the parents in the room. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. when you set rules for your kids, I mean, I mean, yeah. You kind of, that's kind of the language that you want. You've got to be, you know, consistent and the consequences and. How do you say no smoking in a positive way? Okay. Well, it depends, <laughs> it depends if it's like a prophylactic rule or a retroactive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. rule you're making up on the yeah, fly. That's true. <laughs> that's true. So yeah, I think that, I mean, there are steps that we need to take that will help us get to the end here. So I think that, um, so, so this first item, this is again, like a administrative snafu. Um, there's basically two policies currently active. One is called the library rules of behavior, and one is called the code of conduct. There had been also a thing called the policy on disruptive behavior. The code of conduct superseded that. And at that time, when that, they, those kind of went hand in hand, the rules of behavior and the policy on the disruptive behavior, I think were kind of um, tied together. So when they, when they changed and updated the code of conduct, that library rules should have gone away. Um, but before we just say rescind it, I I would like to look at it to see what items are there and just make sure that there's nothing fantastic there that we shouldn't forget about or that we don't have. So once we've done that, we'll bring that back to you guys to just get, get rid of it because um, it's very weird. We have basically two different policies of rules 
in the thing. And I think it's literally just an administrative oversight um, from back in 20, well, I don't know, uh, 2017, I think, maybe 20, maybe 2006. It could be floating around since then. So that's the first thing on this list. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Um, number two is, again, the code of conduct is so tight, tight, tightly connected to the municipal code that we would like to, of the 11 libraries that we um, pulled their policies, some we also pulled the municipal code. We really want to identify of those libraries, which ones use the same um, legal structure to manage these things and have consequences. So some libraries have a municipal code, right? That says, if you break the rules that are in the code of conduct, you're guilty of this, you know, you have to, you're banned for this long. And if you don't follow the ban, you're guilty of a misdemeanor. Some libraries do not have a municipal code. They only rely on criminal code. So they issue a trespass order. So a staff member has to say, I'm issuing a trust, you know, they have to sign off on a trespass order. Um, and some libraries that, that they do that. So it would be helpful to basically the way that the code of conduct is written probably ties into the, the municipal code for those cities that have that municipal code. So we kind of want to identify, and we actually did make a little chart, but sometimes we couldn't quite tell. So there's a little more research there for someone to do to go out to websites, uh, the, you know, the code sites and try to track down those documents and save them so that we can <laughs> look at them and use them as to move forward. Um, and again, some of them won't have any municipal code. They just won't use that avenue to, to deal with these things. They only use the criminal code. So like Los Angeles Public Library, where um, like the Central Library, they have the PD. I mean, their, their security guards are police officers. So they don't have a municipal code. They just arrest people and tell them they're trespassing and off they go. Um, and I don't even know what other criminal options there are, but, um, but because we have this municipal code, we'd like to look a little more closely at the other libraries that also have municipal code. So that's a little task of research and um, data gathering. Um, organizing the current code of conduct into some categories. Uh, staff are working on that now. Um, and then again, maybe coming back at some point to you guys with some kind of lists of what these, what this could look like for some feedback on the wording or the, the, um, the organization, or, you know, we just have to kind of work through exactly how do we want to express <laughs> these things. Um, and there is just a lot of like, the way you say it that can change change it. So it's just going to take some time to say, okay, this is the best way to convey this particular thing. Um, so that's something that um, once we're kind of putting together our list of here's what we think the code of conduct should include, we would start to look at that as a group. Um, and then again, thinking about, um, well, this is, yeah, multiple iterations going back and forth with you to get input. Um, and once we have a draft of what we think we want it to say, um, we would have the city attorney look at it at that point um, to provide us with any feedback, possibly somewhere earlier even in the process, or at least let, let them know that we're starting in on this. And I already talked to the city manager and let them know that we are doing this and that the municipal code is coming into play and we're gonna be wanting to look at that. She said, that's great. Get, you know, talk to the city attorney now and kind of give her that context that this is what we're doing. Um, and then we just have to think about once we end up with our final, um, uh, we don't wanna call it a code of conduct. I think we wanna call it rules of behavior. Anyway, different people call it different things, but we don't care for code of conduct. It's very uh, patronizing, <laughs> kind of weird. Um, 
So then we would decide, you know, how do we want to make this bill public? We need to put it in the brochure. Do we, you know, just sort of the, the practical pieces of, of publishing it and making it public. Um, and that, that's sort of it. I mean, that's, those are the steps. So I think that right now the things that we need to do are um, gather maybe even newer copies of people's policies because they may have changed since we gathered them in 2001. So for example, if someone wants to help with this, we would give you a list. We would give you all the ones we already, you know, give you a flash drive with all the things we've already collected and say, um, you know, does this, do these, does this entity have a municipal code that's related to library, yes or no? And if yes, and we don't already have it, try to go find it, you know? It's just sort of this little, and you don't have, and you guys it, will do it. I mean, it's not that we won't do it, but I know you guys wanted to try to help and, yeah. you know, help us get somewhere. Um, but again, for us, that's easy. I have people in the office. I mean, you know, Sean can help us with that or Michael can help us with that. Sean has helped us with that. In fact, Sean probably gathered them the last time around. <laughs> um, I'm happy to help with that. Okay. I'm a total policy nerd. So yeah. I love looking up codes and policies. Yeah. And so I'm happy to help with that. Okay. It. Okay. Can so, I <clears throat> direct you to have a subcommittee? Um, yeah, if you want. Uh, yeah, the, if you guys want. A, yeah, I'll be I'd, I'd like to. Okay, I'd, I'd love it for it to be like a formal part of the of our yeah um, trustee board to be able to like establish that and like right. really just you know structurally say that right. we're giving that support. Well, I think I think too, I agree, and I think the nice thing about it would be that then you know there can be a, a quick conversation over Zoom exactly. with that group, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um and then it doesn't mean that someone else can't contribute or work on it. It just means that it, these conversations can happen, you know, versus once a month. We, yeah. 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 So, so yeah, that, be, that's, I haven't used that as much. So it'd be great to like allow that to help mm -hmm. you progress. Yeah. Um, on time, just to yeah. these goals. Cause essentially if we adopt it at the next meeting in June, you really only have like maybe 10 months before the end of the school. Right, right. Take it's, out December, take yeah. out August. Right. right, so. Yeah, and that that's one of the, I mean, that's in the recommendation um, directive, whether or not you want to create such a committee. And I think, and then we can I don't find people at that meeting. Well, I don't, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, I think you can, I don't think it has to be agendized for June. I think you can just do it. But what we could do is you could, we could do it. And then if that's not right, <laughs> we can do it in June. I mean, I can check, you know, next week and say, this is what we did. Did we actually establish this body or not? <laughs> um, I know that at city council, uh, when they established the, I guess, committee, it's not really a committee, but, um, sort of committee to start the ad hoc site planning, they didn't, the city attorney stopped them from making a motion and said, you don't need to, you don't need to do that um, for this, this, this little group of two people, two council members that are going to work on something. And I don't know if that had to do with, it's a short duration, you know, because they were just working on it for this period of time and to make the recommendation for the ad hoc committee. So I just don't know. I would say let's, if people, if you want to do it now and say, we want to establish this committee made up of these people, let's do it. And then if it turns out that somehow we need to take further action, we'll just have to do it in June. I probably should have just worded this if I know. I think that's the only thing is the wording on the agenda. I think we should have had it on there as yeah. an action item today. And so because of that, I just wonder if we have to put it on the June meeting with that. Wording. I well no, I don't I mean I think that um we can try. Yeah. Check with us all yeah, time. no, I think that I mean we're you know, we're having this conversation, we're asking for direction about whether or not you want one of these things. Um if if it doesn't need to be agendized, that's just a mistake, right? I mean, okay. if if it's legally possible to create the committee now, it doesn't really matter what mm -hmm. it says. It's just a mistake. So yeah, I and I again, I just don't know. I guess that I I guess I'm guessing it does have to do with um, the scope of the of the committee's work and probably the length of time. So like if the if there if a committee is going to be 
working on something for a certain period of time, it becomes a different situation. Um, yes. So we would probably want to be specific, maybe. We might want to do um, a subcommittee specifically to work on the code of conduct and the related municipal code or something. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask a clarifying question about just the subcommittees? Um, I just want to understand, I mean, like part of it for me is I would love to help with this. I would do it from home, like yeah. between all the other stuff I'm doing. And I just am curious with like setting up committees, like do you have to do it in committee form? Yeah. Okay. Like no, it basically it just the the I the reason you set up a committee is because it allows you to communicate okay. privately with this other person in a way that's transparent. Um, so I was going to ask for ground act rules. Can we have more than two people? No, nope. that's only I think that's the only thing, right? So it's only yeah, two. have to be yeah. two. Um, yeah. So I think you could easily um, put okay. forward a motion today okay. to create the committee you want to create um, and, and appoint the people to it that you choose to appoint to it, and that that's probably fine. And if I find out that it's not, then we deal with it in June. Okay. Anyone want to make a motion? So moved. We take the whole thing? No, we'll, we'll I think we sort of submit it. That you, so, go ahead and mute me the motion. Anyone want a second? Okay, Kenny seconds it. And that, which is to clarify, I'm not the city attorney, but it's what she does. <laughs> Just to clarify, the motion is to um, establish a committee of two trustees to um, focus on the code of conduct policy review and related um, municipal code mm -hmm. review. Yeah. Do we need a separate action to ask to appoint Min and Kenny to it? Um, no, no we can just so, yeah. amend amend the motion to include that piece of it. So I amend the motion to <laughs> say we establish the committee with and these two people and with these two people. Yeah, yeah. with many, Kenny. That's fine. Yep. Okay. We're and not, I second it. We're not in council chambers. We're a little <laughs> okay. bit like yeah. you know. I know. We miss yeah. Diana Mamu because yeah. Diana yeah. I know would she... always be like, no, you do this, yeah, you yeah, do I that. I do. I do miss her. She yeah. would always be like, no, yes, do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I want us to keep uh, us on, yeah. on track. Um, should we call the roll? Yes. Sean, yes. can you do the roll call of that? Yes. Uh, Annie Chang Long. Yes. Kenneth Gross. Yes. Edward Pearson. Yes. Minson Meeker. Yes. Bianca Richards. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Kathy, just the one other kind of like question or feedback I would share is just as we're working on it, I would love to, and I don't want to make it work for your your team, but even just sharing with us, like, what are the areas of the code of conduct that's been difficult? Yeah, because, yeah. like, I sort of feel you like know. Yeah. if it's definitions, if you need, like, right. definitions to be standardized, like, because I'm reading it and I'm like, oh. disruptive behavior is, like, pretty can be subjective yeah. and like yeah. how do you define well, things yeah. like do you give warnings how many right. warnings like right. specific things that have been maybe hard for people to interpret mm -hmm. then at least we know to look for it in other codes that we're looking at of like best practice yeah right? I think what I would recommend is that we just schedule a meeting either in person or zoom okay. for you and maybe myself and Barb and Nada and just give you the whole suit um yeah we can easily tell you <laughs> what the problems are I mean, it's funny because we often are falling back just on the simple statement that uh, you're not allowed to make it, to impede others' ability to use the library as intended. So, and, and it's sort of that reasonable person standard, right, that they that a jury uses. It's like, would a reasonable person think that it's disruptive to do X, Y, Z? Yes. Yes. You know, right? So it, it's hard to can't capture every single behavior. So you do fall back on this. People have to be able to use the library for the purpose it's intended. And if you're doing something that makes that impossible, that's not allowed, whatever that thing is. So yes, so that's what I would suggest is that we, you know, we'll reach out to you guys to see what your availability is like, and then we'll just have a little kickoff kind of overview. Um, yay, this is exciting. Yay, it is.
Thank you, guys. Yes. Um, summer reading program. Um, yeah, so now we're on to just sort of informational stuff. Um, if you guys can read this at your at your leisure, but um, I just wanted you to be aware of kind of where we are. We're a little bit, I think, a little bit behind schedule this year with, with new staff and the vacancies that we've had in the children's department, children's division, but um, everything's great. Uh, the school visits are happening the week of May 13th. So school visits is when the librarians go to the classrooms and they read a story and kind of get everybody all psyched up for summer reading program. Um, and then teachers, the week of uh, May 20th, some teachers prefer to come here and bring the classes here. So we'll have some classes here. Um, it is, they do have to sign up. So we, you know, obviously encourage them to do so, but the number of students we see is, you know, up to the teachers whether or not they want to do it, but they typically do. Um, so all the public sees is in, process, uh, the website, the press releases, getting social media ready, all the graphics um, are in process. Everything I think is at the printer. Um, we print, you know, the bookmark contest uh, winners, which I think is there. So yeah, this year, yeah, uh, this year's, you, yeah, those, yeah. yeah. Um, so those are getting printed and the kids that were had their design selected get their own little stack so they can pass them out to people um and all the reading logs that's probably the main thing this year is that we are going all paper logging so for i don't know how many years we've i don't the other i'm trying to think if the product that we used way back in like 2017 had a logging feature it must have anyway we've been using beanstack but also paper for people who don't want to use the app and it just is really really hard and i think that for at least my feeling is that for little kids um there's something about having that piece of paper all summer and you keep it and you sit down at the table and you're punching your little spot that you did xyz it's just a whole different thing right the app is a different a different experience um i think the adults like the app the adult people signed up but i think for the kids um the paper is better and it was just very hard to integrate those two different tracking methods and the teams were overwhelmed. And um, so we're gonna go all paper. For what it's worth, Marengo read the we went back to paper. Did you? And yeah. I actually was not an advocate of that, but no. it did get more minutes. And yeah. so, you know, I think the teachers were very clear that paper is a yeah. hundred times yeah. and more engaging. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they and you know they can see the progress and physically mark it. So um, it's back to paper this year. Um, all the prizes are, you know, we always try not to get a bunch of like junky plastic, <laughs> you know, stuff. So, um, trying really hard to, to be a little bit, um, conscious of the sustainability piece. Um, we have 45 teen volunteers. Uh, they have their, the first orientation session was today. I didn't go up and see how they're doing, but, um, it's always fun to get them on board and see, you know, there, there's a real range of kids. Some are very confident and, you know, come in and no, you know, there are no problems in summer. It's really a learning experience for them. So it's kind of fun. Um, and then the program, uh, probably the, so Wonderful Wednesday is the big kind of marquee. We do that how many times one two three four five six times um this year a little bit different we're sort of making the first one kind of a a bigger deal so we're gonna have um a um we're gonna have an ice cream truck but vegan dairy we had a whole thing so we're getting like a shave ice thing so free so kids and families everybody can have shave ice um and and then <laughs> the mayor is gonna we have a before the event there's going to be a little meet and greet for people who want to chat with the mayor about whatever um and so that should be a fun one so the bob baker marionette theater uh is coming um yeah and so then outdoors though? yeah well we're gonna yes since covid we've been doing it outdoors and people really like it outdoors um yeah okay. they like it outdoors they sit on the grassy kind of no across from the little patio tables um so yeah and we have some you know people coming back that have um the earth tales science people are fun 
our nimble feet that's tail wise anyway um fun people like it good turnout um and then the fourth of july they'll be marching along in the fourth of july Maida will be doing like her 36 consecutive fourth <laughs> of july and, and not picnicking with her family or whatever it's just sort of a comes with the territory um and then uh we were a little slow this year on soliciting donations from local businesses um it's been done in different ways previously we used to there we, we would it's, it's solicitation the friends are soliciting the donations but we would write the letter and just get them to sign it we would send it this year we wanted to engage them a little bit and so we asked them you know will you guys use your contacts to you know try to help us um uh, get these donations. So we created a little sign up where they could go in and say, I'll take this business, I'll take this business. And people did that. And I think we got some response, but it was definitely pushing the envelope in terms of the timing um, in order to get their logos on the publicity and all of that stuff. So next year, maybe, I mean, I like the idea of that. I don't know if you guys liked it. We'll have to find out. Yeah, I think that'll be a, a recap and just a follow up yeah. since our last board meeting, kind of having executed all of that yeah. and seeing what our turnout is. Yeah. But I mean, again, it was organized on by your on your part, really easy for just, us to just do. Sooner, just yeah, earlier. exactly. Because what would have happened if we had had more time is, you know, these guys had an opportunity to pick who they wanted and then whoever was left we would have said stop picking now we're going to send letters to those people and we didn't that didn't happen so if they didn't get approached by these guys individually you know in a personal way we just didn't ask so it's fine i mean we have plenty of prizes um but we do have some people that either have donated before and they just send their check you know they reach out and say hey summer reading we want to give you money um, so aren't you, you're still accepting just donations like that then aren't you I mean, specifically, to, I mean, we wouldn't say no, but you're not going to get um, as much publicity for being a donor because all the printed material is already yeah. printed. Some people don't care. Yeah. Um, and it would be on the website, but yeah. And of course, our, our main sponsor that really makes it all possible are, are the friends. Um, yeah. And they do, it's $12,000 a year. Yeah. So it's a big, big contribution yeah. to get us to do that. Um, and that's, that's all I have. Do you guys have questions about the reading program? I, I have a question, not really about that specifically, yeah. but how does a class visit come here? Um, people, did they get a bus? I think, well, if they're coming from far away, yes, they probably have to. I don't know the rules nowadays, right? You don't get to go and like car walks. Moringa yeah. walks. Moringa yeah. yeah. takes the, walk. the Metro bus to oh, downtown. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, you just got in some dad's van. You know what I mean? Like parents would drive. I don't think that. <laughs> AB walks. Do AB walk to library? AB walk. Yeah. AB Which walks. one is the one right here? They walk. AB. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, I'm sure they walk. So, yeah, I mean, I think many walk, but I don't know the locations well enough to know. <laughs> but, um, Very cute. yeah, it is cute when they come and they, they'll like have a little, they'll have their lunch out on the lawn or whatever. They're cute. Um, so that's that. We're getting close coming up. <clears throat> and the next thing, if you want me to, sorry, yes, I like, no, I know, no, 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 yeah. So, again, this is just informational. Um, I don't need to go into great detail. Uh, Stephanie is our new part time children's librarian. I think I mentioned last time that she had been offered the job, but now she has started. Um, liking liking her a lot she has some good experience and um is a really good fit i think um alexis spent the saturday that they did the sustainability fair down in the Arroyo, you know talking mm -hmm. people up trying to promote the library um alexis also went to the south pasadena high school career fair um and tried to make them aware of some of the resources that we have that are good for you know developing your resume or whatever and also, you know, tried to talk them into becoming librarians someday. Um, the program that we had that was part of Sewing South Pasadena about the um, indigenous plants and use was really well attended. Did you go? Yeah. I wasn't sure what that turnout was going to be like, but I think it was like 60 people. Yeah. yeah. And he apparently was a very good speaker. Yeah, he was a yeah. very engaging. Yeah. It's interesting because um, there's so many politics 
involved in working with, you know, Native Indigenous groups. Um, you know, we got an email from someone saying that's not a real group or, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of politics. So we were trying to tread carefully. Um, but I think that for us, as we, as we, as we do more programming in that area, we probably want to make sure we spread it out and, you know, work with different, there's probably like six groups in our region that um, are distinct. And so trying to kind of make sure we're communicating with everybody. And um, we, and he brought a lot of his tribal men members yeah. and they all introduced themselves. Yeah. And, that, and that was kind of interesting, yeah. you know, to see that it, in real, real time, right. you know, about yeah. how, a tri how tribal members, yeah. who they are and what the responsibilities are. I really, really want to do a program about the land back movement. Yeah. And there's um a woman uh who sold her property in the in the Arroyo up in Pasadena or Altadena um and, and donated it to um a tribal entity so that you know again this idea that people were disenfranchised from their land and they, they need land of their own to perform ceremonies or you know that that's an important piece. It's really interesting, and they're right up here. And I think it'd be really interesting to learn about that. So that's something we might do. And I think that's a different tribal entity from this gentleman's entity. Well, and what was uh, what was the most interesting because it was the plants. Uh, people kept asking him about certain plants, but he wouldn't commit to where they were or what right. they looked like yeah. because. He said that, like, especially with um, sage, you know, sage, sage is being just decimated. Yeah. So he was very, very careful. And then um, Barbara Eisenstein got up and talked, mm -hmm. and she started to say something. And he told her, "Don't, don't talk. Don't say anything about plants. Don't." Interesting. Because people will go down to the nature mm -hmm. park and they'll steal them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there's definitely there's the, you know the stewardship piece that's really interesting um one recommendation you might do it around indigenous people's day in the fall yeah november yeah. um yeah i'm still trying to i don't know if you guys remember that there's a video that the council the council member wants us to present and i'm still trying to figure out how to make that you know how to tie that into local indigenous stuff um so maybe in july we'll see <laughs> We'll see. Um, so that's that. That was great. The Library Repair Cafe was a big hit. I see Bianca here getting something fixed. So. <laughs> what did you take in? Is that your stereo? Our 1970 radio. Did he fix it? Yes. I have a I have a stereo that I wanted to fix. Yeah, and, and, all. and one person wanted to buy it from me. No. Yes. So yeah. And then this picture, this is Lori Apple, who's yeah. um a uh, friend, friends, board member. Um, so yeah, it was a really great event. Um, and people were immediately like, when are you doing it again? So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, did I put the team fair on there twice? Yeah, sorry. I think I did. Apologize. I had to double that up. Um, and then this just happened this week. So I thought I would share this. So the city has a, a program where they try to highlight employees and it's, um, uh, nomination, you nom anybody can nominate anyone. So um, someone decided that they should call Alexis out. And so this, you know, was on LinkedIn and they put it, you know, on the city social media um, and it's well-deserved. She's been working really, really hard on the new website. Um, you know, our website is probably our part of the city's website is gigantic relative to other departments. Um, so there's just a ton of user experience stuff to figure out how do we make this useful for people and what needs to be there and what doesn't need to be there. And so she's just been working really hard on that. So that's updates. Um, I do have a little list of communications um, in addition to the thing that the city wanted me to give you. Um, did I print it or did I forget to print it? Um, let me see if I can remember something I forgot to put it. So one thing I wanted to um, tell you about is um, the budget stuff and what's happening with the budget right now. So um, the next council meeting 
either, I think it's a slash finance joint council meeting, I want to say is next week. Um, so we still have like several council meetings scheduled with the objective of getting the budget adopted by the end of June. So there's a, a meeting on the 5th of June. I'm going to say there's a meeting on the 20th. So there's two in June. So like we'll go on June 5th and hope to have the budget adopted. And if it's not, we then have a little more time. Um, there's definitely a sense that we need to cut. You know, people can't, we can't, we, you know, that we have to tighten our belts. Um, so I had my departmental meeting with the finance director or the city manager to talk about the budget that I had proposed and was asked, you know, very pointed questions about is the new book drop a dire need? And if it's not a dire need, we're not doing it this year. So, um, so no, the book drop is not dire. Is it kind of needs to be replaced? Yes, but it's not dire. So we probably will not be replacing the book drop next year. Um, but I, I don't think there was any issues with the book budget or the ebook budget or the budget for serials or digital resources or any of that kind of stuff. Um, the uh, staffing piece, the like the part-time staffing piece is still um, clear. I haven't had that conversation with them yet. Um, the way that that works is we kind of do our own in-house projection for that um, because it's very complicated with the substitute librarians. We have people who work once every three months. So their normal way of calculating costs is to say, you have a, a substitute librarian position. They work 18 hours a week, 18 times, but they don't work 18 hours a week. But that's unique to the pool that we have. So trying to kind of figure out what is that cost. Um, and as you know, we have some vacancies. So I'm obviously wanting to fill those part-time vacancies in the new fiscal year, but we haven't had that conversation yet. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. It's definitely, you know, the staffing costs are thriving. You know, the budget is going up. And up, and up. Um, so that's happening with the budget. Uh, and the other thing to update you on is the at the library slash community center um, site ad hoc site plan committee. <laughs> um, trying to, I, I worked all, I was working all week on a staff report for next week's city council meeting, which is partly why these were so late, um, and trying to get that wording right. And um, the city attorney, you know, helped with that to make sure that it's all the way it should be. Um, so they, the hope or the intent, and it should be published in the packet tonight for council, um, is that they will will ask them on the 15th to um, establish this ad hoc body and to appoint a slate of people to fill those positions. Um, and that will include the people that the bodies like this wanted so so Bianca and the person from the Community Services Commission and the person from the Friends and the person from the Senior Citizens Foundation. It's the two council members. And then um, we have been interviewing. So we did the, the call for the at-large members. And we were originally thinking five people for that group, but we had about 57 applications. Um, so a big pool. And so we uh, went through those with the two council members. We identified the ones that we thought we would interview and we conducted short interviews, you know, not long, just, you know, tell us why, um, you, you know, what appealed, what about this appeal to you? What is your background? What do you think you can bring to it? Um, so we, we had a lot of really great people. So it was hard to be like, how are we going to, do five. So um, we're recommending um, eight. So the committee would be 14. It's not big, um, but lots of great expertise, you know, and lots of diversity in terms of usage. And um, there's a gerontologist, you know, there's, there's some good, I think, really good people and really interesting uh, group of people that, um, have not necessarily participated in like city government before. 
like really interesting repeatedly people saying, you know, I love living here. This city has given us so much and our family. And I, I just, it's time to, I, and this particular opportunity versus a commission or whatever appealed to them. So really, it was really interesting. So hopefully that will get happen on the um, 15th. And um, then there's a whole, you know, we've, we've got a whole timeline. We have to get that body together. They need a lot of onboarding and information, Brown Act training. Um, and then we also need to get to a point where we winnow down those 13 proposals from the site planning consultants um, to get to a number that's more manageable for the ad hoc committee to review. Then we can review all 13. We'll take a first round and you know see who actually meets the qualifications. So some people will probably just not be not meet qualifications, so won't be considered. So that is all happening, and, and more to come about that. But exciting that it's actually. Happening. Yeah. Um, so that's coming. And then this, uh, I'm not going to go into great length because as you know, and we've talked about, um, they are doing this analysis. The objective, I think, I see it printed very weird. Sorry about that. The objective, I think, is to um, lessen uh, uh, the burden on staff. You know, they did this analysis of how much time staff spend on running their commissions, and it's huge. Um, so we'll see. It's driven by the council. It's not, we, we had done an analysis like this a couple of years ago and the council said, we want to do it again. We want more information. So, um, like, like we said earlier, doesn't impact us much because we have to be, um, operating the way we are operating because that's what the education code says. Um, but for your information. Information. And that's all that I have to say on direct communications. Oh, wait, I do have one oh, more no, thing. Can I give you one more quick thing? Of course. So at the at the um, April 17th Joint Finance and Council uh, Commission uh, Council meeting, they uh, released like the preliminary results of the citywide budget survey, which hopefully you guys all took and said, library, which I noticed like somebody's taking this twice because um, I'm seeing a lot, but it, but I basically highlighted all the library mentions and kind of community center mentions um, in terms of, hey, fund, this is a priority, fund this. Um, and it was really great. Lots of good, lots of support for the library and for um, this whole idea of a community center and these needs. So this was preliminary, so we'll see the real thing later, but um, if anybody wants to take a look at that, I can pass that one. So that was exciting. I was happy to see that. I just wanted to share that. That's so cool. Will they use it to inform the budget? Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, usually it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's like public safety, streets, streets, public safety, and then kind of this quality. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> streets, what was your body? Um, Board member communications. I can start. Just thank you for the update on the summer reading program. I know it's such a big program, and um, I think it was just curious because it's such a signature program for the library. Yeah. But thank you for all the work on that. I know it comes, it sneaks up fast with everything else happening. Um, I think that's it for me, Bianca. Nothing to add. Okay. Um, today uh, was posted on YouTube, but John Oliver examination of public libraries Ooh, john, okay. oliver, john oliver is hard you know maybe he's not your cup of tea as a comedian but he it was very entertaining oh my gosh i have to watch that that's yeah. exciting you always have something good about I public know. libraries in in like you must have like your google alerts that <laughs> <to> like <laughs> send you every time <laughs> that's fun i didn't know that any public library public tea is it's good yeah. plus you know for sure yeah any any updates or uh, communications? Uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to working on the um, code of conduct or whatever the name is. We have to, have to do this uh, and comparing that with the municipal code and anyone something I'll enjoy. Awesome. 
Thank you. Men, any communications? My line is the same as Ed's. I watched that oh, did you? yesterday and it was all about the culture wars coming to the library and something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was really interesting, but I laughed at the beginning about, you know, libraries having a lot of things besides books, including <laughs> yeah. space. And I'm like, just like our library. Yeah, like so, yeah. It's a really great That's uh, fun. episode. It's almost the way they, they have tools at their library. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people have, I mean, it's kind of like our library of things. Um, the tool library was the first of that type of thing at Berkeley. They, they, they you know, originated that 30 years ago. And then kind of that idea of, oh, we could lend whatever, microscopes, whatever. That is really cool. Um, Council liaison is not here, so friends of the library communications? Um, nothing much. We'll keep it really quick. I encourage everyone to join the Friends of the Library. You can join at any amount, from a penny to whatever <laughs> your pocketbook will allow. Um, next, we have our last restoration concert of the season uh, on the 19th of this month. Please come if you would like. I think it's going to be a great. It's the new Hollywood String Quartet. And then lastly, um, I was just going to say, yeah, um, about some of the summer reading, reading program donations. If anyone, I know we've kind of been trying to charge. If anyone has any like local business ideas or connections, maybe just shoot me an email or something because I know Maida's working really hard and we are just trying to maybe get as much community involvement. I think that was a big thing I was talking to maybe yesterday. It's like this town sometimes kind of dies down a little little bit over the summer. So maybe kind of offering some kind of little like partnership to get people to come into businesses would just be a nice little hand holding experience. Mm -hmm. But I know that, you know, it takes us volunteers to be doing that groundwork. So if anyone has a lead, please, that would be great. So we can help out your staff. So I have some ideas. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, That's it. I'll, I'll, I know yeah. I'm next, so I'll yeah. just be there. Yeah. And I just want to just uh, say that uh, I'm just really impressed with the Friends uh, board. It really yeah. is a uh, very cohesive, very organized. I love the structure that you guys, boom, boom, boom. And it really is a working uh, board, the yeah. Friends. So in, in, I'm very impressed. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna. Um, and we have Kathy go already. Any public comment, Sean? Uh, no. Okay. So with no further items or comments from staff or board members, I will now adjourn the meeting at 8.34 p.m. to our next meeting on June 13th at 7. Thank you very much. <laughs>